Back on the NES, there was a lot of games based on cartoons, comics, television shows, and movies. But not so many based on books. But that's what we got with The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. But is this action platformer still worth playing today? The Adventures of Tom Sawyer was originally released in February of 1989 in Japan, and a few months later was released in North America, though there was no European release. The game is loosely based on the 1870s novel by Mark Twain. Very loosely, though. Mostly, there are a few characters, and the setting is similar. You have Tom Sawyer as the main character. The damsel in distress for the game is Becky. You have the evil Injun Joe, who ends up kidnapping Becky and works as the main villain. And then Huckleberry Finn, who I guess is the palette swap of Tom Sawyer in the two-player mode, though I don't think the game really mentions this in any way. The game was published by the SATA Corporation and developed by Winkysoft, a company that unfortunately closed at the end of 2015, though they developed games up until 2014. They're most known for the Super Robot Wars, the Super Robot Tyson series of games where they developed multiple titles in that series, as well as a game that I think is very underrated for the Nintendo 3DS, Dr. Latrek and the Forgotten Knights, which was very similar in a lot of ways to the Professor Layton series, it was probably why I loved it so much, but I recommend it as a hidden gem for that system. Instead of following the story of the novel, instead it's a dream sequence that takes place in one of Tom's classes where he ends up falling asleep. The game is broken up into six various levels, each in different locations, some of which are a pretty common theme for platformers, and a few that end up standing out as at least somewhat interesting. To aid Tom in his adventure, he has marbles that he'll be able to throw out as his main form of attack. Though you can also find power-ups in the form of slingshots in order to have a more direct approach to attacking your enemies. The marbles, or the main weapon that you'll be throwing throughout the game, has an arcing pattern to it, which can be sometimes difficult to actually hit what you're trying to. The slingshot alleviates this, but unfortunately you have a very limited ammo with it whenever you're able to find those power-ups. There's also the T signs, which if you're able to collect 20 of will actually grant Tom an extra life. If you end up grabbing one of the skulls though, you end up losing 10 of these T signs. There's also the hearts, which work as invincibility. This obviously gives you the opportunity to run through a large amount of enemies without taking any possible damage during this time, and thus can get through a large chunk of levels sometimes, though of course you won't find many of these throughout the course of the game. Tom is far from the strongest video game character ever. Since he's just a kid, he's pretty weak. In fact, only one hit ends up causing you to lose a life. And you can end up losing quite a lot of lives, even just from the very beginning of the game in the first stage, since it's difficult at points to actually be able to jump over and avoid enemies. The platforming and hit detection in the game is okay at its best. The game starts off on a ship. There's some pirates and rats for you to deal with while trying to travel through the ship, eventually making it to the bottom where you'll take on the level's boss. The game actually starts off with a different level if you're playing the Japanese version. It starts off with the rafting stage. The only real reason I can see them switching the rafting stage from being level 1 is they didn't want to confuse gamers too much right from the get-go, so they ended up moving the rafting stage to level 2 in the North American release, but because of this, the level that you do as level 1, the ship, ends up being significantly harder than some of the other levels that end up following it, so you get a much tougher beginning to this game. One of the things I love about the game, though, is the names of the various enemies. In level 1 alone, you have the rats, known as Ra Rats. You have Pamu, who is actually a giant rat that you have to deal with halfway through the level. And then, if you're able to make it to the end of the stage, you have Naroclus. This is a giant octopus that you actually have to attack in his eyes, and he spawns little tiny octopi during the course of the fight. The level itself is actually much tougher than this boss fight, as most bosses in the game end up being rather easy, but it's a nice way to kind of start you off. When you complete level 1, you move on to level 2, which is the rafting stage. Here, you're controlling Tom on a raft going down the Mississippi, or up the Mississippi, whichever direction you want to say you're doing here. You have to jump over a series of platforms, avoid various hazards like whirlpools, and other stuff that's just kind of like sticking out of walls trying to swing and hit you while you're trying to go down the river. There's also evil penguins trying to stop you named Karu. I'm not even sure why there'd be penguins on the Mississippi River, but they're here. If you're able to make it to the end of the level, though, you have Galogert. This is a giant alligator that you have to attack in his mouth. 
it's difficult to do damage to him, but once you find that sweet spot of being able to move back and forth, avoiding his attacks, and being able to deliver their shots, he goes down rather easily. Level number three is a forest. I guess after getting off of the raft, you decide to walk through the nearby forest, which apparently is filled with monkeys. In this case, punk monkeys that you're going to have to deal with, and there's a lot of them throughout the level. If you're able to get to the end of it, you have Sardon, which is a giant gorilla who's made up of all the other smaller monkeys that you dealt with throughout the course of the level. Really kind of bizarre and weird boss, but overall still pretty easy to deal with. What would an action platformer on the NES be without a haunted style of level? And here you have the haunted castle or mansion for you to travel through. You have pretty standard fare, you have skeletons, an evil witch you have to deal with as the mid-boss, and when you make it to the end you have a giant demon. Here you actually have to attack his staff, not him, in order to stop him from, I guess, summoning more evil little demons that try to attack you. This fight is actually more difficult than the other bosses we've dealt with up to this point, and it's a very weird one, having to destroy a staff instead of the actual boss, but if you're able to break that staff, you're moving on to the next level. In level number 5, you take to the sky. Here you have cloud platforms to jump on and some new enemies thrown into the mix like these evil birds. The birds run across the screen and then turn around going a little bit lower and coming back across the screen. Thankfully a lot of them you can either duck underneath of them or jump over them. You have a weird thunder god like enemy that you have to deal with as the mid boss and if you're able to make it to the end of the stage you jump on a platform that turns into a vehicle and actually ride this cloud vehicle against a giant zeppelin known as the Cheplin. Here you have a series of various cannons on it that you'll have to mess with, eventually making it to the engine of this blimp, taking that out in order to progress to the sixth and final stage of the game. Level number six has you traveling inside of the cave to finally face off with Engine Joe. Along the way, you have some normal cave-dwelling-like enemies, but also dragons. In fact, there's a point where you actually have to face off with a series of dragons on various platforms, having to make sure you're able to dodge and take them out slowly, before eventually making it to the boss of the level, the final boss of the game, Injun Joe. He's actually riding on a monster, basically a Loch Ness monster type of creature, known as Mishi. I don't know why they named it this, I think it's actually kind of cute, and they even say in the manual that Mishi is tricked into helping Injun Joe. Injun Joe himself just fires various arrows down at you trying to hit poor Tom, and you can actually attack from a distance if you have the slingshot going into the battle, and if you run out of ammo with that, you can just run up and finish him off with the normal attacks. You then get to enjoy a very brief ending to this game. Once Injun Joe is defeated, you save Becky and Tom wakes up in his class, confirming that it was a dream. Though there are feathers from the Injun Joe battle that appear on his desk, so they try to hint that maybe it was not actually a dream here. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of detail about who actually worked on the title, no credits or information that I've been able to find to find out who actually made this game and what other projects they may have ended up working on. The game soundtrack has a couple of melodies that aren't so bad, and even includes a few that are based on some classical musical pieces here. Not surprisingly, there was never a sequel made to this game, though it wasn't the only Tom Sawyer game released during this era. Squaresoft, or now known as Square Enix, actually released a Tom Sawyer-esque RPG for the Famicom only in Japan. The game is loosely, once again, based on the novel, though a little bit more so than actually this title, and also is notable for its pretty blatant racism in the way that it displays African American characters. The Adventures of Tom Sawyer is a decent action platformer. Other than the license that it's based on, though, it doesn't really stand out in any other notable way. It's not good enough to be a hidden gem, and even though I do remember it fondly from my childhood, the game is okay at its best. It's one of those ones that if you really want something odd that you've never tried out before on the NES, you may want to give this one a shot, but it's not really worth going out and trying to find it nowadays. But anyway guys, it's going to wrap up this retro review. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.